Hey guys, so if you're subscribed to my channel, then you know I'm a fan of Ryzen. These aren't review samples, these are purchases, and I've gone from a Ryzen 7 1700 to a Ryzen 7 3700X. But really, is it worth upgrading from the first or second gen Ryzen processors to the new Ryzen 3000 series? Let's find out. Okay, for most tech YouTubers, their primary audience are gamers. And so if you're asking, does it make sense to go from the first generation to the third generation of Ryzen processors for gaming? It's a big maybe. I say maybe because it really depends on the budget of your system, especially when it comes to your graphics card. Now, one of the most popular selling graphics cards on Amazon is the GTX 1660 Ti. If you're coming from second generation Ryzen, it really doesn't make sense. You'd just be wasting your money going from second gen to third gen if this is the price bracket of your graphics card. If you're at a 1660 Ti or lower, it does not make sense because this is your bottleneck. You will be GPU bottlenecked in your gaming performance. And it really doesn't make any sense investing into $200 to $300 for whichever Ryzen 3000 series processor that you're interested in for gaming. Now when it comes to upgrading from first generation to third generation when it comes to gaming within this budget, it still doesn't really make that much sense, but there are some benefits with the Ryzen 3000 series over the first generation, which I'll discuss more in my follow-up video for this. So if you haven't subscribed already, please click the subscribe button for more Ryzen content to come, where I'm actually going to compare the Ryzen 7 1700 overclocked to a very modest 3.75 gigahertz on all cores compared to my Ryzen 7 3700X. And when it comes to tech YouTubers where they've gotten their free RTX 2080 Ti as a sample for them to benchmark with these CPUs, you can clearly see the benefit of having the third generation Ryzen over the older generation processors. But at that point when you're spending over a thousand dollars on a graphics card for gaming, then it switches from your GPU being the bottleneck to your CPU being the bottleneck. And if your CPU is being the bottleneck for gaming, depending on the resolution that you're playing at, then at that point, you might as well go with Intel and get a 9900K because you still get the best gaming performance with Intel versus any of the new Ryzen processors. But if you are Team Red and you're supporting Team Red, then there's clearly an advantage of going with the new Ryzen 3000 series. Now the main reason why I got the Ryzen 7 3700X is for video editing and that's video editing specifically in Premiere Pro. And of course I was like a kid in the candy store when I got my new processor. I was happy to put in my new processor in my motherboard, the ASUS Strix X370-F motherboard. So yes, the first generation Ryzen motherboards, no issues whatsoever. I had updated the BIOS weeks before I got the processor and when I put it in, everything just booted smoothly, everything was good to go. I was happy about that. Of course, I did some benchmarks. I booted up Cinebench R20 and I got over a thousand points increase in performance with the Ryzen 7 3700X, which I was happy about. Then, of course, I booted up Premiere Pro. I rendered a 4K H.264 video file. That is a one minute video file at 80 megabits per second with a two pass video bit rate. And I went from, right now, let me check my notes. I went from a three minute, 37 seconds render time with the Ryzen 7 1700 to a two minute and 59 second render time with the Ryzen 7 3700X, which is a 38 second difference. Now you might be saying, wow, only 38 seconds improvement, but that's actually a 19% increase in performance. But of course, this is looking at a one minute video. If you're looking at many documentaries that we have to do sometimes, which is 15 to 30 minutes long, that render time, you're not saving seconds, you're saving minutes and time is money, people. If you're doing this constantly, then every minute counts, every second counts. So a 90% increase is pretty nice. But one of the main things that I was looking for was a better playback performance while editing in Premiere Pro. And I can tell you with this, you know what, I'll just let my initial, I'll just let my initial reaction say it all. See, scrubbing at half is okay. Wow. Let's go at full. 
Oh, nice. Okay, still... Alright, that... That sucks. <laughs> Premier's Pro still sucks. <laughs> So yeah guys, I was kind of disappointed, I just was expecting more, but I'm guessing I need to improve other parts of my rig to really improve performance with playback. Because right now I'm doing my edits on an SSD, but I feel like I just need to get a larger M.2 drive, do most of my current project editing on that, and then just transfer my completed projects to a backup hard drive or NAS. That plus more memory, because I only have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and Premiere Pro eats up the amount of memory that you give it. I actually have it limited to only utilizing eight gigs because four gigs alone, Windows 10 will just eat through on idle. So I just give it eight gigs and I have that four gig buffer for other applications running in the background just so that Premiere Pro isn't freezing up my system while I'm using it. So I'm thinking I'm getting more RAM and a faster drive to help me improve my playback performance. But overall, Premiere Pro just sucks in utilizing the hardware that you're using with it, uh, especially it seems compared to other editing software like Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Maybe I just need to move on to DaVinci Resolve. I've been thinking about it. But anyways, I feel like maybe if you really wanna be like amazed at the render time improvement, you'd probably wanna save up and going from a 1700 a Ryzen 7 1700 to the Ryzen 9 3900X. That I believe would probably make you be like, wow, now this is a real nice increase in rendering performance. Overall for video editing, I would still say the upgrade is nice, especially with the render times getting in that 19 to 20% increase in performance. If you're primarily using Premiere Pro and you're just doing these corporate ads which are two minutes or less, and you're primarily seeing just doing 60 second ads, then I don't really think the upgrade is worth it. I might, this might be the un unpopular opinion, but I think you should save your money at that point if that's all you're doing. Again, if you're doing longer documentary style stuff, I think the upgrade is worth it. If you're mixing in After Effects with your Premiere Pro, then that is something to consider because I was just doing a 10 second animation and I did see an improvement with the time that it took to render those animations. So I was actually impressed there. So yeah, guys, that's the honest truth. Uh, the hype is cool and all. Um, I'm really happy for competition. I'm glad that Intel is getting this competition from AMD. I am a supporter of these Ryzen processors. But yeah, it, depending on what you're doing, especially on the price bracket of what you have as components to go along with these processors, the upgrade just might not be worth it. Especially if you're coming from second generation Ryzen. I don't think it's, it's you know, you get hyped up, you see all these numbers like, oh my gosh, the performance is so great. But you really have to put things into context. Especially for you gamers, you're seeing these $1,000 graphics cards being used in these benchmarks with these processors. Most people are within that $200 plus price point, under $300 when they're coming to your graphics card. I mean, if you go on Steam, the most popular graphics card is still the GTX 1060. And the graphics cards that are getting a nice bump in, in purchases is the 1660 Ti and 1660, which are really the replacements for the 1060. So yeah, uh, if you're at that gaming price point, and if you're using second gen, don't upgrade. Even first gen, I'm not sure it really makes sense, but I do have more information on that, like I said. So if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe for more Ryzen content to come. And so if you're actually looking to get something new, if you're not upgrading, and you're just gaming and you're gonna be buying a graphics card at this price bracket, then probably go with the second generation of Ryzen processors and save yourself, you know, a couple hundred bucks that you can invest in the other parts of your PC. So just something to think about guys, that's, you know, might not be the popular opinion, but I'm just trying to be rational here, guys. You don't have to buy the latest and greatest. So yeah, guys, if this video helped out in any way in your purchasing decision for any of these Ryzen processors and you wanna help out this channel, affiliate links are in the description below for the different Ryzen processors. Uh, I would appreciate it if you Click on that link, 
to make your purchase of the processor. No additional cost to you, but it does help me out with this channel. Anyways, guys, more content to come. That's it for now. I'm out.